Hi, this is Sonia, and welcome back to my channel, Sonia on Being 60. Today, I thought I'd talk about calories. So, calorie is a calorie is a calorie, or is it? Well, in the strictest sense, yes, a calorie is a calorie because all calories burn the same amount of energy. That said though, there are many or several things that can impact on how our bodies take in those calories and use those calories. For example, there's the basal metabolic rate. We all have a basal metabolic rate, but some of us have higher levels, some of us have lower levels. You know, we all know those people who it seems they can eat whatever they want, tons of whatever they want, and they will stay lean, they will stay thin. That's because their body is burning those calories at a very, very high rate. Whereas other people, you know, <laughs> sometimes jokingly say, just have to look at a piece of cheesecake, for example, and I put on five pounds. Well, it's because our bodies have a slower rate of metabolism. I know myself, uh, for example, when I was a kid, we used to joke and, you know, kids, all the kids in the family say, yeah, we all have a hollow leg because it seemed we could just eat and eat and eat and eat. And we were like the skinniest little kids. Part of that too, I think is back when I was growing up, at least in my family, we didn't eat any or rarely did we eat any processed food. It was all, you know, kind of wholesome meat and potatoes type of a, a, a diet. Plus, we were always <laughs> kind of shipped outside. It's like, go play. We'd come home for lunch, we'd come home for supper, and then we'd always be outside playing. We didn't have video games. We had like a black and white TV with no TV shows per se, and we maybe watch Walt Disney once a week on, on it. So, you know, um, it's just burning a lot of energy and a lot of your calories, your me metabolic rate would just be high. Plus then too, there's also well, the effect of exercise and what that does to, to our bodies in terms of how we're burning the calories that we're ingesting. You know, for example, if we're doing, you know, if we have a, a weight training routine, we may not burn a lot of calories dur during that workout, but our bodies will continue to burn after we finished the uh, the workout. So again, you know, we there are different ways in which the body is utilizing those calories that come in and and the rate at which they're burning them. There's also what we call the thermal effect of food. And what that means is different foods that we eat, our body requires more energy to absorb it um, to break it down so that it can be, you know, digested and absorbed into our systems. For example, protein. Protein, it takes about 30%, 25 to 30% of the calories in protein are used by the body to absorb it, digest it, and then do with it what it, what it does in our bodies. I'm not a scientist uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, these are things that I'm you know, that I kind of know from over the years of learning different things and just by reading and, um, uh, you know, looking at different studies and, and things like that. Uh, I find it, it's a fascinating topic, really. So the other thing, too, is uh, let's say we eat, um, you know, 100 calories of carbohydrate, a very kind of simple carbohydrate our body is going to maybe use 10% of those calories uh, in order to absorb and digest. And when we eat fat, the body literally doesn't need to do any work for our bodies to, um, you know, use, uh, use uh, those calories that come in from fat. There's an other piece as well, and that's called um, how satisfying foods are. This is satiety of foods. I've always felt that, and for myself, uh, if I'm eating foods that are higher in uh, protein or fat, I'm going to stay fuller for a longer period of time versus if I just ate a bunch of potato chips, for example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel hungry uh, sooner rather than later. 
in doing some research for this video, I came across a study that was actually done in 1995 where uh, volunteers were given a variety of foods, 38 different foods. And they were all given, like the foods were all uh, the same in terms of the number of calories, 240 calories. And what they did, what, what the, um, the testers did was these people would have like 240 calories or whatever it was, and they would be measured every 15 minutes for a two hour period, after which they could then eat kind of whatever they wanted. I was so surprised by the results of this study. The food that came out on top in terms of satisfying for the longest period was white potatoes, like white boiled potatoes, not French fries, not potato chips, plain white boiled potatoes. Frankly, I was shocked. I didn't think potatoes would keep you full for that length of time. Other other things that were interesting in this study was that, you know, they kind of broke it down into like cereals or fruits and vegetables, um, you know, proteins, that kind of thing. And, and they found too that within, let's say, the fruit category, well, not all fruits are created equal either, that they found that, for example, oranges and apples were far more satisfying than bananas. Same in the sugar or the cereal category. Oatmeal, far more satisfying than, um, you know, just your standard breakfast cereal. And again, that boils down to probably the fact that oatmeal is a more complex carbohydrate, that it takes the body longer uh, for it to kind of go through the system. Whereas if you're just eating kind of plain sugar, it's just going through your system and you're not going to be as satisfied from, from something like that. So in reading the study, um, I thought I'm going to do an experiment because I, I, I still find it very hard to believe that potatoes can be that satisfying. So I'm going to do a study. It's an N equals one, which means it's a study of one, me. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to take foods from these different categories and I'm going to every day I'll start at the same time like when I typically would eat my first meal of the day it'll be 240 calories I will every 15 minutes kind of write down how I'm feeling am I am I hungry am I feeling full and at the two hour mark then how do I feel and I also want to see how long does it take for me to actually get hungry if it's after if at, if at two hours I'm still not hungry how long does it take? I'm, I'm, I'm just really curious to see uh, my, how my results kind of uh, fare against the results of this study that was done uh, back uh, 1995. So, and, and I'll post those results. Uh, I think it'll be just very curious to see. As I said, I'm, I'm quite curious to see uh, what those results are going to look like. So to answer the question again, is a calorie a calorie? Yes and no. Yes, from a strict energy point of view, but it's certainly our bodies, our bodies are truly complex uh, little machines and everybody, everybody is different. The way calories are used by our bodies is different. The way we, we metabolize those calories are different. But I think when it comes to wanting to lose weight, for example, we are better off finding foods that are higher on the satiety spectrum of foods because they're, because they're going to keep us from overeating. Also, we want to keep in mind how our body deals with proteins. So, you know, if we eat 1500 calories worth of protein and it takes like 30, if our body's using 30%, let's say, of that to just get it absorbed and digested into our systems, you know, that's... Uh, it's 450 calories that we're not storing anywhere that are actually being used by our bodies versus if we ate 1500 calories of highly um, sugary foods, highly processed foods, and bodies may be only using 10% of that, so 150 calories. So in essence, we're, if we have a diet like that, you know, our body, we are literally taking in like that 1,350 calories um, and our body is using that. At the same time, we're more apt probably to 
overeat because you're going to feel hungrier because those foods that we're eating aren't necessarily going to be satisfying. So it really does, I think, make a difference in terms of what your goals are and whether or not, uh, like if you want to lose weight, for example, that finding the foods that are going to satisfy you longer as well, the foods that are that our bodies are going to um, take a take a big kind of a chunk out of before they actually get into our systems. So I think that's going to be uh, I think that's a really important point to to remember as we um, you know look at what our goals are. And even if we want to maintain weight, it's the same thing. It's like remembering what, what how those calories are working in our bodies. So I hope you enjoyed this brief little video and. I hope to see you next time. And like I said, oh, in the next video too, uh, or two, I will have some results in terms of how I'm finding that uh, satiety index is working. Until next time, have a great day. Bye now.